Hello and welcome to lab six. So I'm going to tell you right up front that this is going to be a long lab, uh, but the thing that you should understand is this is um, the starting point. Do realize how similar this is to lab five. Literally, the first portion of this is literally just a repeat of exactly what you did in lab five, so I know you can do it. And I also uh, wouldn't try too hard to discourage you from reusing a lot of what you did for lab five. Um, right, it's a candy search. I will tell you that this is not exactly the same CSS. So, on one hand, you really could, like, literally, you could use your Lab Five, just kind of call it Lab Six, and start from there. But I think there's value to repeating the process because that's how you get better at things. So that being said, my underlying code looks a little bit different. When you look at the criteria, it's there's not a whole lot. It's because there's not that much added to it, but. Um, you getting back to the point where you got to on lab five is actually what's going to end up taking a lot of the time. I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about that because this is going to be long as is, and I want to concentrate on the new content. So basically, I give you uh, this thing, right? This big chunk of stuff, very similar to what I gave you last week. So what you should do first is just grab everything from the doc type down to the uh, div. Call that your head. You should grab the nab. Uh, grab the nav which rolls from there to there and uh, make that a nav require and you should grab the footer and make that a foot require once you do you'll get something that looks a little like this finished example sorry I'm jumping around I have to right there's those two requires and there's the require and right so that should be the first part of uh, how you look at this so you should definitely do that first I'm not showing you the head foot nav thing because I kind of kind of just did but I'm just pointing at it now I just don't want this video to go really over an hour because it probably just becomes pretty tedious at some point. Uh, the next thing that I want to show you is uh, let's think about this page again just to refresh your memory. So the first part was kind of cleaning it up with the requires. The second part was thinking about how this page works. So you've got three states for this page and right and so there's going to be some flat. We solved that problem with flags last time. I'm going to do it differently this time so you can see a different approach. But basically you've got the first time a user visits this page. There's no table displayed. There's no message saying, hey, you know, you need to search better, right? I mean, there's three ways this page can be displayed. This is kind of case one, if you will, the kind of the raw form. The other way that this gets displayed is if you search and the search finds matching rows, right? That's your table. The other way that this goes is you search for something and uh, no rows are found, right? So there's three different ways that this page can look. And so on the last lab, we addressed those with flags. On this lab, I addressed it slightly differently. And so it's going to be a little bit kind of uh, maybe maybe hard to follow for you. But I, I also, I'm just, I'm not showing you anything you haven't done before. So try and keep that in mind. Because the next time you see my code, it's going to be like this whole page is finished, right? Because you already did that in lab five. Um, so do remember that you have that available to you. I'm going to go show you what I did and we'll talk about it for a few minutes. So this is my, this is that page that you just saw. So see all this stuff up here, create table, this, right, create table if not exists, this kind of weird one-time insert of data. Remember all that that I gave you on wake five? Well, there's no reason you couldn't just copy and paste that into the top of your PHP block. The next part of this was the search, right? Remember the search? It's exactly the same search. We're going to use the search val, the search cat, put together this this uh, query right here. We're using like. Now the difference is I, I eliminated the flags. So if you want to reuse what you did last time, then don't mess with this. But I took a different approach because I personally think it's a little bit cleaner somewhat. So I, I'm doing all the same stuff, but I got rid of the flags. There's my, my requires. This, logically speaking, is nothing new. Here's my form down below the form. Here's where I handle the three cases, right? And so here, I'll tell you what I did. And I did it differently. I always do things differently every time just so you can see some different approaches, different solutions to the same problem, which is interesting, right? That's programming. So there's not an answer to things. There's lots of answers. So I did this. So I set up an is set uh, block. So I checked to see whether the form was submitted. That's the same is set I did right here. And so I just kind of logically thought about this and I thought, well, there's kind of the three cases, right? There's the either the form was submitted or it wasn't. And that goes from here to here, right? So if the form wasn't submitted, in other words, if this is set fails, then nothing, right? So that third case where there's no search results or no error messages, eh, 
whatever, right? That's just the else which doesn't exist. So if the form was submitted, then I use the nested if to define the remaining two cases. So if the form was submitted and there's more than zero rows, then I draw the table. Otherwise, I say no research results found. So I think you'll know what I mean when I say this is a cleaner approach than what I did on the lab last week. That being said, I'm a big fan of flags. I just used flags last time. This time I'm not using flags. Just showing, maybe you'll, so you'll either maybe appreciate flags or maybe understand why we use them or why you might not want to use them. So exact same things happen in here. Uh, the only other exception that I did is on the lab five, I had those big hanging peak, you know, that, that technique, which you've seen several times now where I open up a curly brace and then I close off PHP. I decided I didn't want to look at that here because it is hard to look at. So I did the equally ugly thing, in my opinion, which is echo, 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 echo. I don't know if you remember how I solved that last time. Last time I solved it by just jumping in and out of PHP. Generally speaking, it's a good idea if you have pure HTML like this to not be in PHP blocks, but it's also kind of hard to look at. So I just showed you a different way to do it. So if this is freaking you out, if you're not understanding exactly what you're looking at, you can just take a deep breath and understand that you literally could just take your lab five assignment and start here if you wanted to. Or you could try and restructure it. Maybe, maybe you like some of these ideas, maybe you don't. All right, so at this point, I have now kind of recapped lab five and now onto the interesting part. So, the, so our first real objective here is um, when I search, I want to turn these things into links. So like, for example, when you click on scattles, I want that to take you to a page about scattles. And when you click on twinks, I want you to go to a page about twinks. Sweet burritos goes to a page about sweet burritos, right? They're not links. So we need to make these into links. And this is the first of the original content. So if you want to make them into links, you make them into links just like every other kind of thing like that. And so you got to make a decision about what do you want the link to be? You could make that whole thing a link, but I'm just gonna make the name of the candy a link. That seems like it makes sense to me. So the name of the candy is right there, right? It's, it's that thing. And if you wanna make that into a link, well, let's just wrap it in a, an anchor tag. That was a bad start. Now, you never do an anchor tag like this, right? An anchor tag has to have some attributes, but just to kind of show you how this works, I take an anchor tag, now I refresh, and now I've got links. Sure, my links don't go anywhere, so an anchor tag needs to have a href, which is uh, where it goes. And so this is kind of arbitrary. So I got to make up. So so there's some page, and right. So the page, like the naive approach would be to go to the skittles should go to or scattles should go to scattles.php and another. Uh, but but that doesn't work. That's not sustainable. So what we need is just like kind of a generic page. I'm going to call this a details page. So I'm going to call it literally details. Dot PHP, and so that's kind of the idea here. And let's let's see if I get better results now out of this page. I'm not entirely sure. These actually are links. I just uh, made the color of the links black, which is kind of a interesting choice. So you click on the link, and of course, object not found because this page called details doesn't exist, right? And snackers doesn't, right? Details, details, details doesn't exist. So there's kind of two things, right? We have a choice here. So one thing to understand is, well, we need to create that details page. And because we have headers, heads and foots and, and all that stuff, it's going to be really easy to do. So we can do that. Um, right? We have options at this point, but basically I've got head, I've got foot, I've got nav.php. I don't know why I called it PHP. I think I just did because I could. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new page and I'm going to jump straight into PHP. And so I kind of know how this is going to go. I'm going to have like a PHP block at the top and PHP block at the bottom. I'm going to close that, open it. And I'm going to have a couple requires up here. So I'll say require um, head dot, dot PHP. And I'm also going to require that uh, require the uh, nav dot php sorry i know those are wrong that's dot html i don't recommend mixing types like this but you know i make mistakes i'm just going to live with them so you can see me kind of cope with it as well um this is going to be a foot dot html right and at this point i'm really super happy that i have these requires because literally this details page which is going to ultimately involve a bunch of html and css through using a technique like this 
I'm going to get uniformity, and it's certainly not going to take a lot of uh, work to create. If I save as, I'm going to call this thing details.php. Let's uh, load it up. Actually, so there's not really any, I guess you could load this page, or you could just realize that the real way to get to this page is to click on that link. Right, and there's my details page. Do so you see how cool and easy that was? So, so through using requires like template, done. I probably could have even made that easier, but that's really, really cool thing to be able to do. All right, so the thing to, to, that we want to do now is let's just make it seem a little bit more like a details page. So maybe we want to put a uh, like a like an H1 on here or something, saying details, just just so you know that you've actually gone somewhere. All right, so that's not a huge step in any direction, but now like you're clearly on the details page. So, so the, you might be understanding what the what the challenge is. So these things are links, but the problem is they all take you to the same page, right? How do I make this one say margarine finger, and how do I make that one say snackers? Well, so what's got to happen is, yeah, I like it that we've got this single page for all of them. This is what I call dynamic content. We've got a single page, and it's going to be capable of displaying information about multiple different things. So we need to find a way to be able to get that information to that other page. And so the technique for doing that is passing information via URLs. So heading back to lab six. So see this uh, link right here? So that's not entirely accurate. We need to pass a little bit more than that. And so if you ever paid attention to what the URLs actually look like with the get method, you might notice that you get the, you get the URL base and then there's a question mark. And the question mark, everything after the question mark is as much stuff you're passing via the get method. And so I get to make a choice here. So um, what do I want to pass? So I could pass either, legitimately I could pass like maybe the, the name of the candy, but uh, this sounds like a perfect time to talk about primary keys, right? So how about I pass the primary key of the thing for, for Skittles, right? I mean, primary keys have to be unique, so what a great candidate. So that is going to come from my query. So notice here's what I'm going to do. So I have to make a name for the variable. It's the same kind of thing that would happen via like pressing a submit button on a form, but there's no submit button. So I'm just going to call it like ID, call it whatever I want, equal sign, and then I need to get the thing from the row. So literally I'm going to break in and out of curly braces, and then I'm going to reference that row variable again. And I don't know what the primary key is called. It's called ID. Do you see that? That's one of the other reasons why it's really beneficial to have a create table script on your page, because then you can just reference um, that. Um, so it's called ID. And uh, we'll see if that works. So I save that. Refresh. Hopefully it doesn't break. It doesn't look like it broke. So if I, cur if I mouse over them, you can see down there in the corner, you'll see, see how Scattles has a one, that is a two, that is a three, that is a four. And so see that, that URL that we're dynamically generating is now passing the ID from one page to another. So now the mission, as you could probably, I bet a lot of you are already figuring this out, how this is gonna work is we're gonna click on this page and you go to a generic details page, but behind the scenes, we're gonna use that ID that we have to query our table grab the details and display them on this page. And that is the entire idea behind dynamic content. So one technique I like to utilize when I'm doing like a details page, which is a very, very common thing, common enough that I have techniques, I like to kind of like put together what I'd call a skeleton. Now this is kind of a weird one because you know the underlying table doesn't have that much information in it, but imagine if that table had a whole bunch of information like, you know, where the candy was manufactured, uh, what the ingredients look like, description, user reviews. Imagine, right, there might be a ton of details that need to get displayed on this page, but we've got a simple table so there's not a lot. So what I like to do here is, as I just like to create a static um, set of HTML content with placeholders and then I fill it in in a, in a little bit of time. So like for example, I'm gonna have like an H2 and that H2 is gonna say something like, you know, candy name, right? This is just a placeholder. And then I'm gonna do, some other H2s, so we'll go like candy name, maybe I'll call, sorry, this is kind of lazy. Um, I'll do a category. I'm just kind of mapping out what the page is gonna look like. And the other fields I have are, are calories. I think that's all that I actually have to work with. So that, and so I'll show you what this looks like. So I save that, head back here, refresh. 
And so now my mission is to take that ID, query the table, the underlying table, and replace those with the, the specifics of the candy that I'm actually concerned with. And so that's going to look a little like, so first thing I need here is my require script, uh, my, my connect script. Um, here's a kind of an interesting trick. I don't remember the path offhand, but the path is most certainly the same that the path was on my other page. Kind of a cool deal, right? So I'm just going to do that. I know the path didn't change because I'm definitely in the same directory. And then here's kind of an interesting one. So I'm going to put together like an if, and there's going to be an is set. And let's just stop and think about this for a second before we get too carried away with it. So what in the heck are we looking for? Every other time you've done an is set, that is set has been based around the submission of a form. However, this page is not built around the submission of form. It is, however, built around the idea that there's an ID there. So let's look for that ID. And so if I just say, how's that? How are you looking for it? Well, that's the get method, right? You've probably come to think of the get method as something associated with a form, but it's not necessarily. So that represents, you know, uh, ID is here, right? That's, that's that case. And so the question is, is there an else? Is it possible to get here without an ID being there? And that's a really good question. Let me show you something. Well, kind of is actually. actually. Like if a user just wants to go start hacking around and just do that, which a user can do, well then the ID is not there and this page isn't going to work correctly. Or like another kind of weird example would be if for some reason you wanted to view this page straight, you could do that. And that's another case, right? You, you're not necessarily hacking at the page, but but it's also not there. So so yes, we actually do need to check for that ID. Uh, if that ID is there, then you can do some uh, do some database query stuff. The question is, what do we do when the ID is not there? And the best answer to that is a redirect. So redirects are another scheme or kind of a technique that we learned this week. And so you think about, well, if, you, if you're possibly looking at this page and you don't have the ID of the candy, well, then we should redirect them somewhere. And the case is, where should we re redirect them to? And the answer is probably to the search page or the home page. Or sometimes we just display some weird little message like, what are you doing here? I don't think that's a particularly uh, productive angle, but uh, I oftentimes, if, if a user tries to get to an ID page, I just redirect them back to the search page or the home page. And so those are those are all fine solutions. So now that we've talked about the big picture here, it's just a matter of querying our table, implementing that redirect, and spitting out our details down here, which we're going to begin right now. And so let's start working on this details page. So like I said, we're going to fill in those placeholders. But the first thing I want to deal with is this uh, redirect. So a minute ago, this was blank. Um, so remember, there's the is set. So we're looking for the ID. Otherwise, it's not there. In the event that there's not an ID here, we're going to redirect them to somewhere. And that somewhere that I made a decision was just lab six. Remember the search page? If you had a home page, that'd be appropriate. But uh, I'm sending them there. I'm not putting any delay on it either, as you've seen in the week. If you read the additional article, especially, um, which is not terribly important, then uh, you'll see that you can do delayed redirects. And so I'll show you if I get rid of that ID, then the details page doesn't make any sense. And I kick them out to the search page. <clears throat> so like, there's no way to get to that page without having an ID. So I'll just show you it working correctly. If I click on scattles, pass an ID of one, then I got this. And so now it's just time to execute the, uh, the SQL query and to fill in these things. So I got my require, so let's head on in here. So pretty simply, I can just write a simple SQL string. And this isn't gonna be too complicated. It'll be select star from candies. I actually don't remember what that table's called. And that also reminds me of something else that I think I want to do. So do you remember back on lab six page, this big thing right here, where we uh, create that table if it doesn't exist? I don't think there's any harm on having that in any related page. I mean, you can't possibly get to this page. Well, I guess you could if you were just trying to hack around it, but it's extremely unlikely, let's just leave it at that, that, that you could possibly get to this page without the table being created already. But uh, there's, it is possible, potentially, for you to get to this page, I guess, without the table being created. So I'm just putting this in here. 
Now the reason I like having that here is like this stuff. I think I don't, I can, I don't have to memorize or remember anything about that, uh, about that table's name, if that makes sense. Like those fields and such, like if I can't remember how did I spell category, what was capitalized, what wasn't, what was my data type, I kind of really like having that schema sitting there, right there. So I'm just gonna bring that in and then I don't have to think anymore about about this query. So select star from candies, where, and here I can go, uh, okay, that was called ID. See how it's kind of useful to see that because you need to know what your uh, fields are. And at this point, I realize I don't have that variable set up yet. So I'm gonna call that uh, ID equals dollar sign underscore get square bracket ID. And then I'm gonna put the ID right here like that. Um, so hopefully you're kind of buying what I'm selling here, which is I'm sure glad that I can see the name of the table and, the, and that the ID is the ID. Because in a minute here, I'm going to be fetching these things and it's going to pay again to see those things. Sure, it's kind of like a wasteful query, you know, 99 out of 100 times, but I don't mind doing it. All right. So I've got that ID, that ID is there. That's my query. Like I said, it's definitely not a real complicated one. And then I'm going to create a result. And set that equal to my SQLI query and I'm going to pass that my DBC and my SQL and or die and here I'll say uh, bad SQL echo out my SQL and at this point it's probably worth running just to make sure that I haven't done anything hideous I won't be have any results to display but we're pretty close all right, oh, DDC, right? That's exactly the kind of example that I might catch on line 18. Actually, even sounds the same, which is kind of weird. All right, so I refresh. And now you can assume that that query, I'm not actually certain that I wrote it entirely correct, but it's at least valid, which is a step in the right direction. All right, so from this point, what I need to do is just start filling this stuff in. And so I'm thinking probably the easiest way to do that is to fetch that row. Now every time we've fetched a row, it's always been in a repetition structure. There's no repetition this time because we're searching based on this uh, primary key. You're only gonna get one row. So, I mean, I'm gonna call it row. Uh, you could call it candy. I mean, cause it is, it's not really a row. It's kind of a result, but anyways, I'm calling it a row. So say my SQLI fetch uh, ASOC and I call that on the on the result and now here now there's some kind of weird things going on here you might be wondering like um, what if this didn't return any rows well that shouldn't happen we'll kind of talk about it later on but but uh, like the only way you really should be on this page is if a valid uh, URL was passed, right? And then when I say valid URL, I mean a valid ID. There is some potential scenario where like you could be working with an ID that doesn't correspond to something in the table. But if you think about that for a minute, that's kind of a goofy situation. I'll show you how you could get there, but it's not, it's not something that you'd probably anticipate. So anyways, I got my row. And so now instead of candy name, here's how I like to do this. So I take out that placeholder and I'm going to put in some like uh, inline PHP tags and I'm just going to do like an echo that's called row um, and the field I'm looking for is name this is where I'm really happy that I can see what the fields are called up there just because it, it's not this it wouldn't be so easy uh, if it if I didn't have that sitting right there and I don't like copying and pasting but this is a prime candidate for copying and pasting so paste uh, paste and I substitute things in so that's called category and this is called calories and that right there should more or less give me some dynamic content on this page and so these little placeholders that I had sometimes I'll put in like XXX or just something that stands out as like hey I need to replace that before I'm done you see now I get scattles, hard shell, 200. Now I don't know if that seems very cool, but I'm going, okay, so uh, <laughs> I gotta get back to that. Um, I gotta get back to that uh, search page. My nav bar's broken. Yeah, so let's fix that. This is a good example of something that I've uh, kind of preached about a little bit, but uh, obviously I wasn't doing it. 
So notice where this is sending me. This is sending me to some page called search. And this is what happens over the life of your site. You realize that, oh, my thing wasn't called search. It was actually called lab six. So what I would do is I would open up my nav and just quite simply make that into lab six. See how easy that is to fix? Generally, when you make uh, modifications to your site and your file names and paths, it's kind of a nightmare because you got to update it everywhere. But using requires, you'll notice that now it's fixed on all my pages. So let me go back to the search page, carry out a search, click on something like um, margarine finger, and you'll see now I get margarine fingers. And now I can go back and forth. Sweet burritos, right? I, I get sweet burritos. Uh, if I do something crazy, like, I don't know, that kind of thing, right? Getting rid of the ID manually, it's going to kick me back to the main page. That's good. And there's only that one last thing that we have to mess around with. So let's say I click on Daddy Mints, and it's fine. Well, what if Mr. User uh, wants to be a bad guy and put in that, right? Like, what in the heck is that going to do? Well, we'll see what does it do. Kind of nothing, right? Kind of a weird deal. So if you put in just some strange key that's not in the table, it kind it now it, now this is I didn't actually know it was going to happen because they kind of changed the configurations on Xamp. Um, you could get notices potentially, I would imagine, uh, but we didn't. So basically, what happened was like you, you through kind of hacking at my site, I was able to kind of get out of this situation of uh, pulling up some valid information. So really, I guess what needs to happen here is uh, probably if the ID is not in that table, then we probably should redirect them kind of the same way we did. Where is that? Oh, see that, that thing right there. So think about that for a minute. So what we need to do is we kind of need to make that happen if that thing is, uh, is empty. And so I guess I'm just I'm just kind of spitballing right here, but one approach to that would be something just like a simple if. It's like if uh, MySQLi num rows um, result is um, equal to zero, then uh, just throw a redirect at them. Because that is definitely the only thing I can think of that makes sense. Just so you know how this works, uh, when you throw one of these redirects, uh, nothing below that happens on the page. So this isn't going to, you're not even going to get to that point. So let's, let's test that out. So I'm hoping that that kind of saves us from this really weird situation where you're searching for something that doesn't exist. And. I mean, that was a classic mistake. I had a single equal sign instead of a double. So I refresh, and I'm hoping I get booted back to the search page, and that's exactly what happened. And so now we've got a, so what's happening is on our search page, which we already know how to do, we've now created a dynamic URLs, which link to like a details page about each one of the candies. And then on this page we implemented a couple safeguards one was hey if you got here without an ID you don't belong here I'm gonna kick you out and if my users decide to start poking around with things really it's really the only way that you're ever gonna get here well, I guess yeah that's pretty accurate then uh, we'll boot them as well so kind of some pretty cool things happen in here in terms of like how much new content went into this not a whole lot actually so now you have a couple of new tricks to work with, redirects, and also that scheme of creating dynamic URLs and processing them. So this is a big step in the big picture. At this point, you could, if you start thinking about what you could do with these tools, you could do pretty much, uh, not, not exactly everything you'd ever want to do with a dynamic web page, but you can do a lot. You can store data, you can display data, you can generate dynamic content, and then from here on out, we start talking more about things like security and persistent data across sessions and such, but uh, in terms of the big tools, they are now out on the table and now it's just a matter of applying them.